So welcome everybody. Good morning, good afternoon for, from wherever you are calling in from. We're delighted to have you live with us today. So uh, this is going to be an exciting session because we're here to give you some insider secrets into how to decode men and how to attract the attention of male investors when you are pitching to them. And it's going to be an exciting uh, session today. I would like it to be as interactive as possible. So if you have questions, please shoot them into the chat box so that we can answer them. We'd love to hear from you. Um, so I'd like to move on to, to explain who we are, who we are today and what we're going to talk about. So John, would you like to introduce yourself to everybody here? Certainly. Hello, everyone. My name is John Fayad, and um, I do a lot of work in gender relations. I, I've written a number of books. Uh, collaborated on a number of books and um, conduct, um, facilitate gender relations workshops around the globe. And uh, that sort of led me to uh, meeting Anne and, and seeing how we can focus that into this world of funding uh, because there is definitely an imbalance uh, that we'll share during the course of this session and ways to resolve that. Thanks, Anne. Thanks, John. Uh, so I'm Anne Ravanona. I'm founder and CEO of Global Invest Her, and we are a global platform and a community to help close the funding gap for women entrepreneurs. We want to help demystify the whole pro funding process so that you can learn how to get funded faster and get back to your business. And we do that through several ways, notably through our Investor Academy, which is an online academy of courses and masterclasses. We have some webinars and we do have some face-to-face uh, -face events in certain cities. So I'm an absolute passionate women's advocate. I have your backs as John does. We, we really do believe that we can make a difference and get more women to to be able to ask for what they need for in the pitch and to understand a bit better how um, men think and how that those gender differences show up in the pitch and that's what we're going to be doing today so why are we sharing this we want this knowledge like John and I were the guardians of a secret aren't we John <laughs> <laughs> it's as if we are. We really want this knowledge to get out to the world because we want more women entrepreneurs to get funded and we want more male investors to see and hear those women entrepreneurs in a different light, to take away some of those shields of biases that are mainly unconscious and, you know, to help give, we want to give the secret sauce, don't we, John, to, to help women entrepreneurs navigate that pitch situation when it comes to looking for funding. Absolutely. And this, this is unique information. I mean, we, we, we tend to approach this from the same perspective year on year, but there is a difference here. A lot of it's driven by understanding the nature of our differences, not just a cultural influence. And that gives us, I think, a, a, a deepened perspective. It dimensionalizes the way we see this. So you're absolutely right, Anne. Exactly. And so what we want to do is make sure that um, we will answer your questions as, as we go through this uh, presentation. Um, and it really is, we want to make sure that you ask them as much as you can. Send them in the chat box or in the comments box and we will get to them. So please do feel free, whether you're on Zoom or whether you're on Facebook, feel free to ask your questions to John and I because we're going to get to them. And um, basically what we want to do today is to give you some insights, some sneak preview into what is inside the on the moment course that we have made available to you um, on the investor academy now john and i we've john we've been working to, on this for a couple of years honing it and and um, you know making it even more pertinent to the to to women entrepreneurs especially after the me too uh, situation and I wanted to give you a piece of feedback, John, because last night I was at a women entrepreneurs event in uh, Paris at the Family Accelerator, and there was Emily Bellet, who was one of the very first women to go through the Own the Moment course with us, John, many years back. And she said to me, Anne, I remember that course very, very well. She says, I was pregnant with my first child, and I remember asking John some questions as to how could I handle that in the pitch. I don't know I if you remember. remember. Yeah. And so she was there last night and she was like that, you know what? John's answers and the whole webinar, like the webinar that it was a format at that point, it gave me so much more confidence. It really did make a difference to me when I was going into those meetings afterwards. And that just warmed my heart. And I wanted to tell you that straight away, John, and tell everybody because that's, that's the, 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 the joy of what we can help you to do. So 
So what we're going to do is we're going to walk you through some of the things that we share uh, on this course. So we're going to give you some of those golden nuggets today um, and answer some of your questions just to start to, to show you how powerful this knowledge is and how powerful, you know, what you can do with the knowledge. It'll help you to um, understand men in your daily lives as well, won't it, John? Absolutely. Oh, yes. It's not just, I mean, we are the same person whether we're, we're at work or in our personal life. So no question about, good point, Anne. Yeah, so I wanna make that clear to everybody. Um, so we're gonna go into how can you decode how men think? Because I think, come on, everybody, let's face it, we all kind of know that men and women, we think differently, we know that. But we don't understand the subtlety of those differences and where they come from. And that's where John and I, we want to share some of those differences with you today. And you, you'll notice that We've been very careful in how we, we, we've built this course and how we share this information with you. When it's talking about gender differences, John is the absolute expert on it, and he's going to share you some insights uh, from neuroscience and cool stuff you wouldn't have heard before. And when it comes to um, like talking about insights from the male perspective, you get that from John. And when it talk, talks to getting in, when we talk about getting insights from the female perspective, you get that from me. So we really make it as complimentary as possible. So let's let's go in here. So what would you what will you learn if you join us on this course? This is what you're going to learn. We're going to give give you some tidbits today. Um, you're going to learn that there are differences on the pitch, okay? And they do those gender differences do exist. It's not all in your head. Sure it isn't, John, because that was one of the key things we wanted to really share. Right, that it's not in your head, absolutely. There are, uh, and you're right about you, our perspectives, and my bringing the male and you're the female. Something to also uh, point out though, is that we speak of tendencies, but these tendencies are so important because it's the predominant tendencies that uh, really, that we can learn the most from. So there are patterns of, of behavior and that's what we'll be sharing today exposing some of those patterns and where they source from and then how to um how to work with it really how to frame your conversation and your presentation of yourself so that you're best understood and you you get what you want really exactly and and the key word there john that you've used is is tendency it's not stereotype it's not the same how would you define the difference between the standards tendencies and stereotypes so we get that clear from the beginning well, it, it's, it's it's an acknowledgement that not everyone behaves one way or the other uh, but there are patterns of behavior and if those patterns are observed um frequently uh almost consistently and you and and what makes it also non-stereotypic is because we get to the heart of or the nature of our differences and it's not just to say that it's only nature we're also influenced by culture by family upbringing even my birth, or, birth order. Mm -hmm. So all of this is taken into account and we see these patterns over the decades, over the generations. So I think it's understanding it better and that makes it uh, people more um, uh, aware of, of their situation. Uh, I call it active consciousness and, and that's what makes the difference for people. Yeah, and I think it's super important because we don't want to get caught up in this nurture versus nature debate because that's not what we're here about. We're here to give you some really practical insights to understand those tendencies and where the gender differences come from and show up in the pitch situation so that you can then use that knowledge to better uh, prepare for your pitch, uh, both before, during and after the pitch. And so what you learn um, if you come on this journey with John and myself is you, we will first take you through what is the world of funding today? What does it mean for, for women entrepreneurs so that you can understand where you're putting your foot, you know, into what ocean you are standing. And then John, you take us through what, what is it then we do next? Well, then we go through the, uh, uh, the male, uh, male and female uh, biases and blind spots. And as you said at the onset of this uh, um, webinar, uh, a lot of them are uh, unconscious. A, a lot of our behavior is. We don't realize what we do. We do it out of pattern. So we'll go into that. And then we'll go into the science a bit. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, uh, just enough to give you an, under an idea of, and you'll, you'll probably notice a lot of it in your lives as well, that's something I've realized, Dan, all over the world when I've, when I've presented the science of gender differences. Uh, people sit forward in their seats. They come up to uh, me afterwards and say, I, and say I, I never knew this. In fact, for many, it's cathartic because they realize, for instance, women are constantly um, thinking. 
uh, uh, constantly active in a sense. And that's, uh, it's, it's a very natural thing. So we get into that, we get into the science then. And then what, Anne? So, and then we help you to understand what are your own biases and blind spots. Because we look at the science, we look at the biases and blind spots of the male investors. It's important to understand what we have as female entrepreneurs. What are those glasses that we wear ourselves? And then what we do is we wrap it all up together for you in a very clear way. Um, you know, practically with lots of practical tips as to how you how you can adapt your content your delivery style when you're in the pitch situation how you can prepare before during and afterwards in the relationship building with male investors with this new knowledge so this is the package that we want to share with you which is like really gold dust isn't it john <laughs> i think so i I'm so tempted to start sharing some of those tips and observations, but I don't want to get ahead of us. We're going into it now. So will you kind of walk us through? We, we've, we thought it would be interesting to give you some little sneak peeks and some tidbits as to what you can learn. So the first part we're going to go on to is the biases of male investors. And I'm going to invite John to kind of walk us through what are these key blind spots that we have identified and that are actually generally identified across the world that male investors have. Yeah, and this, the first is that men are comfortable in this environment. Uh, men are comfortable in the business environment. When you think about it, go back to the Industrial Revolution. Um, the male business, the, the business world today is very influenced and still very much so by men. It's almost like wallpaper, and we've all defaulted to it. It's not that it hasn't been successful, but there's so many definitions of success today. So men are comfortable in this environment because it's basically built around them. Um, they don't value women's business concepts and the women's market. They don't understand it all that well. Mm -hmm. Yet when you look at the success of women's businesses, it's just amazing. It's almost as if they're really missing something here because all the data shows that women owned businesses are very successful in many ways, far more successful than men's, even in terms of the return on investment for investors, women. And another is that women put family first, uh, Women are able to, to multi-think. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, because of brain structure, uh, a little better than men can. So women can do both. It's difficult for, um, for, for men to see that sometimes, that women can have these, can juggle uh, two worlds at once. Um, they don't understand that. It's important for them too. And it's not that women are risk averse. Women do take less risk than men, but women tend to be more risk calculating. That's very different from being uh, averse to risk. Mm. Um, and also there's something else I, I just, I've been thinking about recently, Anne, and I've done some research on this. The risk, the de definition of risk is different. The kinds of risk that men take. Women take risks, but it's not part of that general definition of what risk is. Mm. And then this point about women are not confident. A lot of this is in how women show up to pitch. Mm. Um, it could be tone of voice, their delivery. Uh, they don't boast or brag as often as men do. They may see it as deceitful, but men see it as self-belief. Mm. Um, very interesting dynamics there. Women are confident, but they don't uh, express that or frame it in a way to show their confidence. Or they don't express it in the way that male that men are used to seeing it, so they don't read it as confidence. And I think that's... Absolutely. That's, really, really important difference, you know, because we know that there are lots of, now the research shows that women get different questions in the pitch than men, you know, and they will get, women will get questions that are around, okay, how can you manage the operations? They're around the problems, if you will, versus male, male entrepreneurs will get questions around the potential. And that's something you talk about a lot on our course, Absolutely. about how to talk to your potential. That's a huge difference. Men do get questions on potential, Women tend to get questions on, well, you know, this seems to be risky mm. or uncertainty uh, or how do you uh, offset these challenges? It's not from where will the growth be? Exactly. So those are, and those are, now you talk about stereotyping, that's stereotyping. Exactly, exactly. And that's why it's super important for us to identify, you know, what are these key biases that that male investors have, because once we know them, you, once you have that knowledge, then, then you can work with it and get around it. And, and that's where, you know, now that this knowledge has come out about this research, 
now people are saying, okay, so you just need to go in and, and talk to your potential. But how do you do that? And that's something that we share on this course, don't we, John? We do. And, and, and something to add to this, this is not male bashing. No. That's something we don't do. No. Uh, the way men think and the way women think are both brilliant. We think yeah. differently. Now, the guy sitting there looks awfully relaxed, and it's not to say that all men are that comfortable in the work <laughs> But uh, it just seems to, you know, we're, we have fun with photos. So. <laughs> we have fun with photos, because the photos tell a thousand words, and that is kind of how the m men are comfortable in their male world of business. So we also talk about in this course, you know, what are our women entrepreneurs' blind spots? And um, I think the first one that's really important, and you can see here in the photo, if you look at her, she's kind of looking over her shoulder and she's kind of, the guys are in the background and she feels excluded. And she feels, and often women feel that men intentionally exclude us. And honestly, it's not intentional. With the insights that you learn uh, from the neuroscience from John, and we're going to give you some of those now in the next, in the next section. Um, when, when we get those, um, sorry, when we get those, um, those questions um it's it you know the thing is that women tend to think that they exclude us and it's just not the case a lot of it is by, based on unconscious bias and we are misreading the same way that men will you know the male investors can misread us in the pitch through our body language and our tone the same way we misread them and that's how we share some of our our, our tips on that in the in the t in the uh, in the course. So, for example, one of the things that John mentioned is that we are, you know, women don't like to brag. And in the pitch situation, you're there to sell an opportunity to invest in your company. So you've got to be showing the big vision, how big is the opportunity, and how is that investor going to make their money back? That's what they want to hear. And yet, what we often see women entrepreneurs do is very professionally present here are the milestones, here's what we've hit. So they'll talk about past milestones and they won't claim their expertise. So if they have, you know, fantastic um, uh, intellectual baggage, lots of degrees or a lot of experience and stuff, they, they won't talk about it. They just move on to talk about the team and what's happened versus, um, you know, making a big deal out of it. And that's what the guys would tend to do. Like we, we show in, in the course, we have a photo with the guy with the megaphone, don't we, John? <laughs> oh, we do. You know, just an example of uh, an unintentionalness is uh, men don't maintain eye contact as long or as often as women do. Mm. And that's not a learned behavior. That's something we see all over the world. So if she's saying he's not looking at me while I'm talking or he's not maintaining eye contact, she thinks that's intentional when he's not thinking that way at all. So that's an example of an unintentionality that uh, are, is often misread by women. Now, there's a lot of things, so many things that men misread about women, but this is one of the things that women misread about men. Absolutely. And I think it's a key thing. And I've noticed it even now. Um, you know, I, I notice a lot more in meetings and speaking with uh, investors and with women entrepreneurs, just noticing who's talking and that the women we want to, we want that eye and we need that eye contact to feel that there's, we're building a relationship. And that's also one of the things that we share in, in, in the course. And one of the other key things that I've seen around the world, John, is that, you know, women, we don't ask for enough money. So this again is about talking to our potential. It's, it's around not claiming the space that we need to claim. And so we, you know, what I often see are women entrepreneurs asking for $500,000 or euros or whatever it tends to be, whereas the guy is asking for 1.5 million, right? And so that, that can harm women entrepreneurs because, you know, we can spend all this time and energy to raise the 500 million and it's the same amount of time and energy you'd need to get that 1.5 million. So you might as well get the million. And the problem is you're going to give up some of your equity and go through another round, go through all that stress again sooner because you won't have enough money. So that's one of the things that we notice a lot that comes through that women don't ask for enough money. Um, and again, it's through, you know, self-belief. Uh, oh, I couldn't ask for that, you know. And these are the things that we need to understand. Where does it come from? And one of the things that you share uh, as well, John, is how, you know, women can doubt ourselves. And you explain that. And I can't wait to you. You're going to tell us a bit more about that, where that comes from. And we can tend to overshare our weaknesses. So we say, oh, well, we did this and we tried that. And, you know, it didn't work this well. So the woman may go overshare and give too many different details. And we explain why uh, in the course, why that happens. Yeah. 
but it hurts her in the pitch situation because it can come across, how can that come across to, to a male investor, John, if she's oversharing? Well, yeah, because they don't see men doing this. Uh, and, uh, and that's what they're basing everything on. So that's like the standard. So if she's, she's not behaving as I typically see. What, what we share in, in, our, in, our, in our course here is something that men tend to do, even as boys. Mm -hmm. We develop a tunnel to our intentions and we put obstacles and doubts outside that tunnel. Mm -hmm. And the greater the stress, the thicker the tunnel walls in a sense. Mm -hmm. So um, we don't share, uh, yeah, we make mistakes, but we it rolls off our shoulders. We, we try to forget that, sometimes to our detriment because we repeat the same mistakes. But, but uh, this is, women tend to be honest about that. They want to be forthcoming in all ways. And you still can be, but you have to recognize what the, the male investor's expectation is based on patterns of behavior that he has seen in many other male entrepreneurs. So that's where you want to frame We'll get into the framing of conversations and such, Anne, but that's a big one. Uh, I think it's beautiful that women are honest that way, but maybe in the pitch environment, um, it may not be as uh, productive for you as possible. And again, it's not about being dishonest in the pitch. It's just about don't talk about those things that don't need to be talked about at that moment. I mean, those are things you can talk during due diligence and other times of the negotiation phase. Just keep it, put that tunnel around yourself. And that's something that we're going to we'll talk about. And the last, I would say, the last uh, blind spot for us women is that we find it hard to ask from our networks. You know, how many of you ladies who are here on this with us, would you say that's true? If you, if you should say that's true, please say hi or say yes in the chat box. Because I think that is really true. It's so hard for us to to ask for what we need. And we need to build that relationship. So we say that like we are we can be more uh, relational than uh, men who are more transactional. Isn't that right, John? That's absolutely right. And, and women, all the women I know uh, have, all, have all, all known that, uh, that um, they tend to give before asking for themselves first. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's, it's a, is it a nurturing thing? Possibly. There's nothing wrong with that. I think it's a beautiful thing. But women would rather give than ask. Uh, and um, the thing is, yeah, so it's, well, something, another dynamic here, though, quickly, is that women tend to negotiate for others better than they do for themselves. So that's something maybe to establish that frame of reference that in doing so, in negotiating and asking for and tapping on my networks, I'm really helping my team. Exactly. Um, or, or the people who buy this product or service from me. Exactly. And I'm asking for the money I need, the resources I need to bring the solution that we have to the problem and that's going to serve all those people who have the problem so when we t reframe it and take the stress off i need to raise money no 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 reframe it and say i need to get the resources that i deserve and that i need in order to serve those people right. so now let's get into the heart of the matter john can you kind of walk us through some of these gender differences and and where they they come from i'm going to show the slide with the different brain sections but i think it'd be just great if you just give us an overview of where some of these gender differences okay. come from. Okay. So you're sharing the next, oh, there we are. There we go. So there are, these are, there are several areas of the brain that, that, that show the most significant difference. And uh, there have been over, and, and, and these studies have gone really since the 1990s. Technology and the ability has enabled us to peer deeper into the human brain and to watch blood flow. So MRI scans, magnetic resonance imaging, is really uh, advanced neuroscience. So when you look at the major areas of the brain, um, context, problem solving, decision making, that's the newest or part of the brain over the past couple of million years, the neocortex. And uh, for instance, the prefrontal cortex is twice as large in females by the age of 13. Uh, but this is like the, the executive center of the brain. And there we see some significant differences between how men and women um, rationalize uh, their critical thinking skills. In all of this, folks, there is no, one way is not better than the other. We're, the way we think is brilliant, each of us, males and females. Uh, it's just that we, we need this counterpoint in a sense to, if we didn't have, we wouldn't be where we are after six million years. The other is thought connections. Women's hemispheres, for instance, the right and left hemisphere is better connected uh, through an area called the corpus callosum. That enables women to, to be both 
logical and emotional at the same time. Men have a difficult time with emotion. They say this all over the world. I don't know how to handle emotion. And sometimes they'll pull back feedback uh, for fear of an emotional response. But there are ways that men can deal with emotion. We help men with that as well in, in working with it. But women's perception is also far more attuned. And this goes, it does go back to, um, to prehistory, to deep history around the cave or in the field. For instance, men are 17 times more likely to be colorblind than women. That's still with us from our, our days of hunting because you can distinguish movement in the field better without having to work with so many colors and hues. Now here's something else, emotions, deep memory and drive. That's in the center of the brain, the limbic system. And that's been with us for the longest time. And um, so women have better memory, it's proven from uh, the age of 33 to the age of 95, even during the fog of menopause, women have superior memory to men, far more detailed. Now, all of this is, is, is necessary. Now you're saying this is all, it's not just uh, driven by nature. There are then those, you might say the veneers that's put on it as a result of culture and upbringing. Mm. A significant difference in this, uh, then we'll move on in, is coordination, action, and timing. Mm. Men's, uh, that, that little dot there you see is the cerebellum, that, that part of the brain. This is one of the reasons that men don't necessarily need to maintain eye contact as often as women do. Think of it, I, I know I love to go back into deep history. I, I know uh, anthropologists who speak to this as well. In the field, you're quiet. You know the location of the men around you. Here's, here's how you can notice it. Men can stand shoulder to shoulder and maybe have a, 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 a drinking a, a beer or whatever, staring out over a lake and have a perfectly fine conversation without even hardly looking at each other. Mm -hmm. Women will tend to, and tell me if I'm wrong, they tend to circle in. So that each okay. other's eyes, make sure a connection is made. Very different. And, and it's so funny because I was at a, an event uh, with investors a couple of weeks ago and we were a majority of women, a lot of women investors, and there were two male investors, no, one male investor. And all of the women, we, we literally went into a circle and we started, we were looking at each other and I was explaining some of these differences and I said, see, I said, look at him. He doesn't need, he's standing beside me. He's had perfectly fine to have a conversation, but all of us need to look at each other and we they really noticed it there. So it was, it was fascinating. So like in the course, John goes into each of these sections into a lot more detail. And what's super interesting is to, to understand like how the fact that we, problem solve differently the fact that we remember more um the fact that our, our two hemispheres are working all the time together how those things can per, can impact the pitch anything you want to say john before we move on yeah you mentioned problem solving and i'm curious if people have noticed some of these things like eye contact women tend to bring far more information they you might say they're divergent thinkers present a problem to a woman on average the tendency is to seek out as many causes for that problem as, as, as possible. Men are somewhat of the opposite. We tend to be convergent thinkers. We tend to eliminate the problems to zero in on those one or two things. Both are brilliant ways of thinking. But can you imagine when we think together how far more advanced we can be? Exactly. And that's what the whole point of this is to say, is that we need to share to, to, to with everybody that it's together that we can we can make much more of a difference because we can join the forces of those differences together and create more value. And that's why we should have male investors investing in the female founders and mixed teams. So John, can let's give them a tidbit into this part, which is super interesting. So why does the 10 minute pitch work for men and not so well for women? Tell us why. Well, men tend not to engage in conversation too long. We're better in short spurts. Mm. And uh, it's very focused that way, that tunnel to the intention, as I told you. The fact that men are convergent thinkers, that they zero in uh, on an issue, they bring in less perspective, you might say. Mm -hmm. So all that, the short time, the serial thinking. Women tend to be um, whole brain uh, thinkers because um, uh, they're using the, their, their entire brain. Men tend to be sequential. We're not so web-like in our thinking. One or the other, yeah. Right, so it's A, is B, A equals B, which is the result of C. So it's very linear, very straightforward. 10 minutes is perfect to get the point across. Mm. And so 
what happens with women entrepreneurs is kind of like the opposite. We are opposites, opposites attract. So why the 10 minute pitch, 10 minute pitch doesn't work for us is because we need some more time. We're more relational. So we want to build a relationship with the person that we're talking to. And you just don't have that time in the pitch. And what tends to happen, as John mentioned earlier, is we don't have that tunnel way of thinking. We have a web-like web way of thinking, which means that in the pitch, if we're asked a question or we're presenting a point, very often we don't do one, two leads to three. We'll do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Because we have that bigger, deeper memory bank and we've loads of examples, we'll go and add all those examples. And so suddenly it's longer and we don't get to, to tell all the things we want to because we have all this information and it just we just don't have enough time in those 10 minutes to share it and so there how can that be perceived by men john if we do it there's one two three four five six seven instead of the one two three well it comes across as uncertain possibly mm -hmm. or too many qualifiers you're making too many concessions uh, uh you know, so they, they don't now they don't sense it as 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 confidence mm. uh, or straightforwardness or assuredness uh, now it's very frustrating for women if they can't express themselves too because the stress levels go up but once but but if you're more aware of how you're being received you can manage that stress and um, and get your point across so that's where the preparation should be on how to be more focused so you can make the 10 minute pitch work for you and that's that's why we give you all these key tips because one of the things isn't it john through hormones and so on is when women are stressed we tend to talk <laughs> i wonder does that resonate with many of you who are alive with us you know we will talk and talk and talk and whereas men will tend to close off wouldn't they john <laughs> well, actually and i'd like to see some hands on this in the chat mm -hmm. um, men can shut down three to four times during the course of a day even as boys and uh, the reason is to replenish testosterone we'll even shut down in the middle of a meeting when I say shut down, I mean your mind goes elsewhere. Mm. So when you think back to middle school or tertiary school, it was young boys staring out the window. You know, it's not that they're not listening, and that's something else that's fascinating here too. They're still listening, but not maintaining that eye contact in a sense. So there's so many fascinating dynamics that go down uh, that are present here that really are wonderful to understand, fascinating really. And so say it in the chat box, say yes, if you agree, because I think that's a very important point. And the fact that, you know, when, when sometimes we ask a man or a husband or whatever, um, you know, what are you thinking? And he says nothing. Believe him. <laughs> He's shut down. Does that resonate for some of you? Please do share. Say hi, yeah. yes in the, in the chat box, because I think that does. Oh, really I was saying, uh, Abraham is saying, I. I've seen that, but I thought it was that I was boring. Oh, you see? <laughs> Charlie says she agrees as well. Karen says yes. Yeah. yeah. And you see, these are things that we didn't know, John. And so Christine says, I find this very interesting, but I'm, I must be very male because I should down or look out the windows. I can look at the window as well. So John, answer that. Christine, that's excellent that you should say that. I know many women who come home after a long day or even in the office after a critical meeting, they just want to sit in their office or cube and just turn off the world for a little bit. Mm. Absolutely. This is not black and white. There are many men who are social mm. and love to communicate, but the, the preponderance of the tendency is what we're getting at, is that on average, men tend to not engage in conversation as long, um, tend to shut down, but it's not so much the shutdown in the pitch. It's not engaging in long conversation not wanting to hear long explanations. Men have to learn to be patient for that. It's difficult for them too, because what's stressful for women is not stressful for men in some instances. Like talk, women like to talk, they talk through their stress. Men tend not to. What's stressful for men, which is too much talking, sometimes, not all men, cannot, is not necessarily stressful for women. So it's fascinating how we're not the same, but we're equal. That's, a love, and that's very important and that's where again the misperceptions can come up and that's yeah. where like on this course what we do is is john and i we help you to kind of harness this information because you say oh that's really nice it's cool to know but the part the important point is to say 
what can you do? How can you adapt your pitch? How can you adapt your actions with what you know, what you learn on this course in order to have a better result, in order to get through to men and grab their attention, you know, get their attention and hold it for longer when you're in that pitch situation. And that's what we do. Hmm. You know, some, if I can add to that, and something we're working on right now is uh, a, a similar kind of course for male investors. And really, so the instructions are different for them. The tips are different. Maintain eye contact. Help the woman entrepreneur get the best out of her pitch. And, um, and, and that's, uh, 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 so, so it's not just women have to change or adapt or reframe themselves. It's also that men need to do the same thing as well. Exactly. And I think that is very, that's a very important, let me just go back to this, this side here. It's a very important message that we give on this course. This is never about turning women into men or making you have more male-like behaviors and become men in order to get through to the men. Sure it isn't, John. It's really about, it's about learning their language so that you can communicate and get through to them better. That's what it's about. And, and you know, breaking through some of the biases. Um, so there's a question or there's a point here from Barbara and she says, how is it possible to change the conversation to focus on the potential and the growth? If male investors are accustomed to seeing only the risks and challenges, won't they see a woman that presents confidently her challenges as brash and obnoxious? What do you think, John? Yeah, let me, well, it, as some may interpret it that way, but I, I need a better understanding of that, though. The question, though, that in presenting here, let me see, here we are. So is it, is, how can you change the conversation? So it's a common entrepreneur to, to talk more about potential and growth. And will it be misperceived by the male to suddenly, you know, she's talking about potential and growth. How do you do that? Well, it's in the delivery. You see now, even, Barbara, even in your saying that, you feel that you're, you would be coming across as brash and obnoxious. How do, ask yourself, how do men do that? You know, so it's really, it's how you deliver it. There's an acknowledgement of issues and such. But I think with, as any investor, they want, they want to know that you can push through that, that, you, that, you are, um, that you're resourceful, you know, that you acknowledge, but you move on, you know, that you can deal with it. So it's, it's how it's, it's, it's in the, the delivery, really. It's in your body language, how you present that. Uh, and now something else, too, is uh, don't maintain, don't, insist on eye contact by as example by seeking out their eyes and trying to hold on um uh, it's it sort of because that makes men stressful so, so that's something we have to recognize as well as how to play that looking not looking kind of game in a sense not demanding eye contact but realizing that they don't maintain eye contact as often and it can become stressful if they're asked to and I, I, it just makes me think of a scene john in uh the, in that funny movie with robert de niro and he's like gone you know and he's like literally i'm watching you and he's like devouring the other guy the poor son-in-law with his eyes going i'm watching you i've got eyes on you and that's like it's a bit like with uh with uh with animals that it's 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 difficult to um you know, if you want to intimidate an animal, you you look them in the face, that they will see that as aggression. You look them in the eyes. So, you know, and Barbara, I'm looking more at your, uh, the point is that studies show that women who use the same behavior as men, mm -hmm. uh, asking for a raise or promotion, are perceived as being pushy. Whereas the kind of behaviors, that's, Barbara, it's very true. This is where we're, we've been so conditioned uh, over, over the years to see that. Not all do. Uh, I think male investors have to start recognizing this. And yet, even then, there are still ways of doing it that you don't have to, I'm not asking you to lose your authenticity as a woman uh, because we want authenticity. And, um, and because the way women think is brilliant. And I think that's being short shrift in business and in government. We don't have enough of that. Mm. So even if, that, you can't be sure if that's how you're coming across, but there are ways of doing it without being male, acting as a male would, but acting as a woman would with that same confidence. It's because women can be and can exude confidence without being perceived as being male-like. Mm. So it, it's a fine line. It's a challenge. Uh, there are challenges for men too, but there seem to be more for women because the business world is built around how men think and act. But it's changing. And we're here to make it change faster.
exactly. And we do share more tips on how you can adapt um, to that thought process, Barbara, in, in the course. And like one of the things that from having spoken and watched so many women entrepreneurs um, pitch around the world, many of the, many a time you're saying to me, oh my God, when I walked into that room and I start talking about my business, I can see the, the I, you know, I can see the shutters come down and I can feel that the guys are not taking me seriously. Or, you know, when the investors started looking up at the ceiling, I started to lose confidence. So that's again, to John's point, it's just because they're not looking for, it doesn't mean that, you know, um, that they, that they are, uh, uh, that they're not listening to you and they're not with you. So uh, Dr. Doro is saying women might have to stop worrying too much what others think about them. You should my mouth. <laughs> not care. Yeah. And go for it well prepared. Get your numbers straight. Financial literacy. Absolutely, Dr. Doro. Show investors what's in it for those, for those investors adding value with their idea. The investors we, women seek investors for. Absolutely. So it, that's the, the point of showing John the fact about um, that Dr. Doro uh, mentions about showing figures. We bring that up quite a bit in the course. Could you want to tell us a bit more? Well, men like to deal with facts. Uh, the good doctor is very correct here. Uh, the whole part about worrying too much. Sometimes women, you can be your own worst enemy mm. uh, because you take things into consideration. Um, you're paying very close attention to the investors, the, the judges on the other side of the table. You're looking at their body language. You're reading every nuance of movement. You're absorbing all this information, which is brilliant because women are far better at doing that. Mm -hmm. I mean, even reading meta messages around the eyes and mouth, little nuances of change. It's high sensitivity to that environment. Men are not as tuned in. So sometimes that intensity can work against you. Uh, so blow past it. Don't worry so much about it, how you're being perceived. You've got the facts. Uh, you have a great business plan, a great product that's going to be successful. So stick with that. It's don't be your own worst enemy in these environments. So Barbara says, thank you. For what it's worth, I've been extremely successful in business and in government at senior levels. I've been taken seriously by very serious men, people, included men, including men. But the startup investment environment is a dramatically different and more skeptical arena than I have ever experienced. I have the impression that guys get the benefit of the doubt. Thank you for these helpful tips and good ideas. You are presenting perspectives and ideas that I have not heard before. Mwah! Mwah! Yeah, That's what we want to do. <laughs> I know I'm exaggerating, but it, it comes from the heart because... You know, John and I, we really want to arm you with information that you won't have had before. And that's what makes this course unique. Right. And to, to move on, because we want to keep this short and sweet. Um, so what else are you going to learn on the Own the Moment course? And what we do with John is we fill it full of practical tips, like we've been sharing with you here, to make sure that you can actually go and change some things. You know, you can actually make a difference straight away. And we want to, we want to hear from you. And... Um, in the course, we do talk about how to handle the Q&A section in particular with, uh, with investors because that's where we deal with the potential versus problem um, questions. How do you navigate that section? How do you prepare for those difficult questions? Um, even body language, some signs. So John goes into quite a good piece uh, into that, into the Q&A with investors, don't we, John? Absolutely. You know, as you're speaking, Anne, I'm thinking, Men have a difficult time with the Q and A too, male and, uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, you know the the, the 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 feeling of the, of uncertainty or intimidation. It's not just women, you know one gender or one sex that has the uh, the market cornered on that, but there are ways to get through the Q and A um, without over explaining. I mm. think that's a big one, Anne. You know that uh, a question is asked, we tend to over explain. Not not just women, men tend to as well, but women. In this environment, if you feel you're already one down when you're walking into it, um, you know, it's, you've got to rise above that. Yes. And that's it. And so what we do is we also share some vocal tips and body language tips to make very, so in the delivery piece that John was saying, um, and we go into that in detail so that you can, you can make the nuances, you know, that's, that's very important. And then we wrap it all up with what are the major turnoffs? What are the major things that investors hate um, that you should not do? And what are the things you should really avoid to do when you're pitching? So we cover all of that. Um, there's a couple of questions coming you know, through. Before here. we go, Ian, it's yeah. not so much the major turnoff, but I'll give you an example of mm. 
something that women tend to do more than men. And it's, and, and turn up uh, the inflection of their voice at the end of a sentence. Mm -hmm. Sometimes even if you're stating a fact, you'll mm -hmm. turn. Now, not all women do this, but many do. And you're doing, the reason women tend to do this is, is so it's not to be as declarative, to maybe create dialogue. Mm. So I just don't want to make the statement. I want to, you know, it's an open discussion. Well, uh, men don't read it necessarily read it that way. They can read it as, as doubtful, as, an uns as uncertainty. So watch the inflection of your voice at the end of your sentences, that you, st you state it in more declarative tones uh, and not turn the ends of your sentences up. That's super, super important. So what value is it for, for you? What will you get when you join us on the Own the Moment course? Well, I think we've given you an over, over, overview and a taste of the things. So what you hear, the way we talk on the course is very conversational and it's exactly like this. We have built it in a way to be with you and to have a conversation with you and to share practical tips from both the male and the female perspective uh, throughout the course. So we will help you to recognize what are the things that you need to change in the content, um, the delivery of your pitch. Um, so to avoid those um, misunderstandings and to make sure that we can significantly expand your tool set so that you're going in with new tools that will help you not only in the pitch situation, but also when in your, in your private life with men, because you will learn the things you learn, as I said, it, it's, going to, it's going to help you in your private life. And a lot of this, John, that we're talking about, it's about reframing the conversations and looking at it from a different angle. With this gender lens that we're bringing in, we're showing you how it can be perceived. Isn't that right, John? Absolutely. It's, it's, uh, and again, not to lose your authenticity as an individual, as, as a woman or a man. We never asked that of anyone. Uh, but uh, how to frame your conversations, as you said, so mm. that you're better understood. Uh, and, and the best way to do that is to know how and why men think the way they do. And it's not that you're not going to know it all. It's like asking, would men love to know the way women think? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> you can never be sure, but a few tips can help tremendously. Now, when I speak with women, I maintain eye contact. You know, that's something I've learned over the years. And uh, that's something we coach men to do. So it's just because I'm co coaching men to do that doesn't mean I'm asking them to lose their authenticity. Mm. The same thing with women. How you can change your pitch style so that you're not acting as a male, but but you're in that frame of reference for the investor. So you're not doing things that sort of knock you off that, uh, off that rail. Exactly, and that's, that's, the, that's the, the potency, the strength of this, of this course. So, and if you are a, an accelerator or a mentor or an advisor to a female founder, this course can also help you because you can, um, if you're an accelerator, can help build the confidence of your female founders uh, in the presentation when they're presenting to, to male investors and get them better ready for the demo day. Um, you know, improve their chances of getting funding because we help them to get into this tunnel of thought that John mentioned. And of course, it shows that you're walking the talk, that you're supporting diversity. Um, and if you're the mentor and the advisor, it really, again, these insights will help you to, to help that woman debrief certain interactions with uh, investors where they may be misunderstanding things because you'll, have, you'll be seeing it from this type of perspective. Isn't that right, John? Absolutely. Very good, Anne. So we're coming to the end of this section and I want to, um, of, the, of this session and where can you find this amazing course? So John and I, we have, we have made it available to you on the Investor Academy and I'm going to be sharing the address with you now. So what's included in it? You're going to get all of these exclusive insights. As you saw, Barbara, these are things that you cannot get anywhere else. And so they're exclusive insights specifically tailored to female entrepreneurs who are looking for money in that pitch situation. So it's very focused and we think it's going to arm you with incredible tools um, and insights to reframe the conversation and when you are interacting with those male investors. It's online. It's available 24-7. So once you buy it, you have access to it for one full year. So it's not as if, oh, I buy it and it disappears. You have it for one full year and you can, um, you can check it out um, and see, you know, if you just before pitches, after pitches to kind of remind yourself. 
And what's very important is each of the modules, we break it down into six different modules and each module has worksheets for you to take notes, to, to capture your learning. It's not just to take notes, it's to make you think about what you've just learned. What are those key tips? Um, we have short, impactful videos. So the longest video on the course is 26 minutes. So you can watch it on the train. Um, you know, when you're traveling, you can listen when you're running because obviously you can just listen to it. And then we also give you lots of extra resources, books, blogs, um, uh, YouTube videos on unconscious bias, more information on where to read about the brain science. Um, and finally, the, the, the other thing that we have, which is exclusive to this uh, signature course, is we have a special Facebook group only for the members of Own the Moment, where you can interact with John and myself and get those questions. And the great thing is, you know what, in most courses, um when you buy the course you can't interact with the with the instructors and you can with us you get our personal emails um and you have access to our uh the facebook group so what we would do is you know encourage you to in that group to ask those questions and then we would have some closed zoom information conversations with you to answer all your questions you could debrief how your pitch went and so on so you've got some ongoing support with us so that's what's included so we're going to cover your your questions um it's basically how much does this cost what's important is to understand so this course costs 497 dollars the good news is that you can get it now for 497 there is a special voucher so we have 20 percent off today if you use the gih20 code you can get 20 percent off the whole website including on the moment and we'll actually keep it open for a little bit more but really get in there uh to to have access to 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 the academy and to be on the moment so really what it will do is give you access to the information you need so it's 497 the good news is you can also pay in six easy payments okay it's it's we want to make this easy for you we want to make this accessible to as many women entrepreneurs as possible so we really do encourage you to check it out go for it read the the testimonials from the women who have done it. it so we had a question here uh, that was asking how long does it take to complete the course so we estimate it will take probably about five hours in total if you really take time with each of the modules listen to the to the watch the videos you know work on the worksheets and check out all the other resources so it's not like weeks and weeks and weeks of stuff this is something that's totally doable and if you want to binge it and do it all in one go you can absolutely do it and come back to it so it's not drip we don't drip feed it to you over a number of weeks we want to do to have access to this information all at once so that you know we know you're busy we know you're busy and you need to have access to when it suits you and you may just need to to have the tips on the q a section so you want to you want to look at it there so i'm going to stop here and um just again share you've got the link here if you go to academy.globalinvestor.com, you can check, you can check all our courses and so on. You have the exact address here, slash courses, slash OTM for on the moment with 20% off. Um, John, I'm going to go to look onto the Facebook just to see um, in the last few minutes if we've got any extra questions there. And bear with my Facebook friend, Facebook Live friends. Um, Dr. Doro has said thank you very much. And John and everyone for sharing your insights, much appreciated. So that's great. Would you like, I'd love you to share here in the chat box, tell us what you've thought so far. How have you found these tips today? And, you know, tell us more about that because I want, to, I want to, to hear from you. So while I'm just going on to the um, Facebook, do tell us in the chat box. Absolutely. And, you know, in, in all of this, it's, it's, it takes courage, really, to put a business together and, um, and ask for funding. Uh, it takes courage out of it from anyone. But in this, I mean, you can own the moment. Um, don't be denied. And it could be these small things that can make such a significant difference for you. Let's see, here's a question or a comment from Karen. Yeah, go for it, Tom. Very helpful, I look forward to hearing more. I have two meetings with investors coming up at the end of this month, and I have only pitched once. Well, I hope some of these Karen, some of these tips will help you. I really wish you a lot of luck, um, best wishes. And uh, I hope you pick up something here, even from today, that uh, just might give you that, uh, an extra edge 
really, that you may not have had before. Exactly. So I'm checking here uh, to see if we have any more comments. So please go ahead. Um, I'm just checking. Ah, OK. Thank you, Karen. Okay. So apparently it didn't get through. She says, Karen said she's going to buy the course. Yay, fantastic, Karen. Use your code. Enjoy it. So it's GIH20. We love to see you there. And, you know, anybody else, what would be your feedback to us today? I'd love to hear. So Keith, hi, Keith. Keith is saying, greetings from New England. As an investor and advisor, I can validate what you both are saying. Well done. Well, thank thank you. you. Can we get an extension on the cord? Yes, Charlene. Yes. Thank you. Very helpful. John, how do you say if we give them the code until the end of the month? That gives them time to, to have access. Would you be on for that? That sounds great. All right. So, uh, Kleena says, so Eris says, thank you, very helpful. Um, Kleena says, I found it so true on how women usually overshare their setbacks when pitching. I have seen that so many times. Why do you think women do this? You know, that's not, that's a good question. Uh, uh, it's Siona. I'm sorry if I mispronounced Kleena, it. Yeah. It's an Irish it's a, name. <laughs> good question. That's not, that's not a learned behavior. I mean, that, that, that's not a, um, that's a learned behavior to hold yourself back to self-doubt. That's something in upbringing. That's not a natural thing. That's not instinctual. Um, it's instinctual for women to be more nurturing, which is fine, which is perfect, and men to be less so. But nevertheless, uh, a lot of it is upbringing. A lot of it is um, the culture, the media, the cinema, uh, music, all those things, books that you've read, the protagonists, which are seldom ever females. You know, So it's a lot of those things that you can... Um, once you're aware of it, it's, uh, you're, it's like cataracts fall from your eyes, in a sense. You start to see the world differently. Thank you. So Charlene is asking to get a copy of the slides. So Charlene, we'll be sharing um, this on YouTube afterwards. We're recording it. It's going to go onto YouTube so that other people can see it and, and get the goodness of what's available here. But we really encourage you to go and check out the course. So you will have heard all the key tips here. You can have a chance to, to listen to them again um, on YouTube. And see there, what, you know, sign up, get this, invest in yourself. And the other thing I want to say is, you know, by investing in this, um, we want to make sure, like, when you invest in, in a course or a masterclass on the Investor Academy, the proceeds of that gets, goes back into Global Invest Hertz for us to be able to offer more courses and more masterclasses. So you're actually investing in yourselves and in the greater the greater um, world of, of women entrepreneurs. And you know, John and I were very excited because we're working on the next course, which is all around how to help male investors to better read female founders when they're pitching to them. And that's gonna come in the fall, isn't it, John? We're, we're gonna work hard to get it out. That's but, gonna be a great course too, yes. And Charlene says, great stuff. I know other female entrepreneurs who could benefit from this. Thank you, Charlene. Please feel free. You have the link here. Um, I've just left it on the screen so everybody can see. You've got the code and you also have the link. But it's very easy if you go to, even if you go to globalinvesther.com, you'll see Academy. You can go in there, look in courses, and you will find on the moment is our signature course. This is the magic dust that we want to share with the world. Um, any last questions? So Christina said, I like this. I have many thoughts. I hope to come back. I particularly like to know how to handle when you actually stand out as a woman. Hmm. I'm not sure what that means, but uh, I'm curious. Yeah, Christine, tell us a bit more what you mean by that, and that'll be the last question for today, because we do yeah. need to wrap it up. I'd like to know how to handle when you actually stand out as a woman. Mm -hmm. um, how to handle the, um, the reception of uh, or, uh, acknowledgement of male investors or others. Um, I'm not quite sure. But uh, maybe well, typing, so I don't know. Typing. But I would say thank you so much, John. Thank you for being with me today. And thank you for working with me on this. And like together, we really, we really do believe that the knowledge and the tips and the insights we share can give you an edge so that you own the moment instead of dreading that pitch. You own that moment. So thank you, John, for being with, it, being with us today. Best wishes, best wishes to everyone. Best wishes to everyone. Thank you to everybody who's still with us, to Kleena, Christine, Aira, Keith, Charlene, 
and many, many more. Rhonda, Nicole, Sway, Survi, Vasiliki, loads of people. Any last comments, please do put it in the chat box because we love your feedback. It helps us so, and tell us how you did. So, Christine, yes. I like this. She says she's going to email us. Grand. She's going to email us, which is fine. And we'll respond to that email. Thank you, Christine. So, thank you very much, everybody. We're going to close this off for today. If you like what you saw, check us out on the Invest Her Academy. We've got your back. John and I, we've got your back. We want to help you get funded. So, check it out and love to hear from you soon. Take care, everybody.